Nikon D500 it may have a smaller body and sensor than the D5, but the D500 has much in common with Nikon's latest top-end camera by Angela Nicholson, June 8, 2016, 3 p.m. IST Nikon Tech Radar com verdict at last nikon has a professional level aps-c format camera to replace the d300s and compete with the canon 7d mk2 and it's a real contender with an impressive af system and great low light credentials that enable it to produce high quality pictures in a wide range of conditions pros same af system as the top end d510 fps shooting for 200 raw files metal weather sealed body Cons, 2 MP rather than 2-4 MP handling niggles tilting rather than very angle screen. While some may be a little disappointed that the D500 doesn't have 24 million pixels on its sensor like Nikon's other recent DX format SLRs, the rest of its specification is very impressive, and it's likely to prove particularly attractive to sports and action photographers. The autofocus system is especially enticing, capable as it is of getting moving subjects sharp in difficult lighting conditions. Noise is controlled well throughout the native sensitivity range, ISO 100-51200, and even the results at ISO 100 and 2400 look pretty decent. The top expansion setting, however, is largely pointless, its results look much better in reasonable light, but in the dark conditions that really demand such a setting there's lot of noise in raw files and smearing of detail in JPEGs, making subjects hard to identify. It would be easy to dismiss Snapbridge as just another small step in the move towards a more connected world, but I think it's actually a significant one. It enables you to keep your camera and phone connected, and to transfer images without clogging up the memory too quickly, or flattening either the camera or the phone battery. We liked. The D500's robust build means it's more capable of withstanding heavy use than Nikon's existing DX cameras, and it can be used with confidence in poor weather. It's also great that Nikon enthusiasts now have a high-level camera they can upgrade to without having to opt for a full-frame model. That's especially important for those who have an extensive collection of DX format lenses. Further good news is that for less than half the price of the D5 you get a lot of the same technology, including Nikon's top-end autofocusing and metering systems. I love the fact that shots I've taken on this camera can be transferred automatically to my phone, it's really useful when you're out in the field and fancy sharing a few images. We disliked. I only have a few relatively minor issues with the D500, and they're things I've complained about before with some other Nikons. It's high time Nikon streamlined its DSLR interface a bit, and sorted out the eye, info button issues. The focus selector lock could do with being a bit tighter, so that it doesn't flick round so readily when the camera is being carried on your shoulder and is bumping against your body. Final verdict. The D500 is an excellent camera, and one that will serve many enthusiasts well, giving them the first-rate systems they desire in a smaller, more affordable body than the D5. Many will be mulling over whether to go for the D500 or a full-frame camera like the Nikon D750. The D750 is a good all-rounder that controls noise a little better, but if speed and a durability are key concerns, the D500 is the one to go for. It's also a better choice if you have a collection of DX format lenses and no FX, full-frame, optics, although it has the chops to resolve plenty of detail, so don't be tempted to use inferior glass. Source, techradar.com.